Feta, congratulations on a very great match. Uh, but uh, can you explain what happened with the hair? Because we've not really quite ever seen that. I don't know if you do that frequently, but. No, I mean, I was just posting the video on the Instagram saying, you know, sometimes you gotta cut your hair, hair not by best hairdressers and in the not best moments, you know, and it was bothering me a lot. I was trying to put it behind my headband, but my hair is very thick and heavy. And in the end, when I was hitting the forehands, every time I would hit a good shot and I was coming, it would hit my eye every time. And I, I, I had struggled, you know, and I thought, okay, what's more important now, my hair? which I can let grow or the match. So I thought, okay, I gotta go for it right now and that's it. I was not thinking too much though. I was just trying to get the best of me and what bothers me to take out. So will you have to have it recut tomorrow or you'll just live with it? I don't know, when I did it, when I was stepping on the court, walking towards the other side, I was almost crying because of my hair. Uh, so I don't know, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that so far. We'll see what's in there because I still didn't check it, so. Uh, Sveta, can you talk through your emotions throughout that match? It seemed like there was a lot going on, just uh, maybe in your head or just what you were going through. Can you talk us through that? I mean, you know, I try to behave and act like I'm a professional athlete, professional player, and uh, I mean, sometimes it's not easy, you know, and sometimes you uh, kind of pulling through, you know, saying, okay, I, I put aside the, um, that I'm tired, I put aside the emotions, I put aside the jet lag, whatever, you know, I didn't want to think about it, you know, I was trying to think we're even, we become, we came here both to fight and let's play the match, put all things aside you know and at some moments I was like when I get the warning I was like come on I'm trying to, so hard and then it just I let it go because I was like come on it's just impossible right now and maybe it, at some stage it helped me but you know it's what it is and I I did it as I felt you know I was trying as much as hard as I can to fight and just be there but you've now won I think 10 or was it 13, 13 against um, against against Tiger. What is it about your game that just frustrates us? So, do you think? I mean, I don't know. I, I I know that I won last two matches in last month against Saga being match point down both matches. So. It's very hard to say, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying my best when I play her. She's really tough. She's uh, three or four in the world. So, I mean, uh, um, you better maybe ask her about it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, we always have tough matches, but I guess somebody win and sometimes it's, it's more times for me, but I mean, I don't know. I think we always have great matches and both have chances. Hi. You know, where do you learn toughness from? Does toughness come only from playing over the years and playing so many matches? Or does toughness also come from where you grew up and, you know, your mother was a great cyclist and cycling is, you know, incredibly painful sport, you know, full of repetition. So do you learn toughness from there as well, from what you learn in your childhood and from what you hear and what you see? I guess, uh, first of all, it's w what you have inside of you, you know, it's something comes from the heart and uh, I always work very much and a lot and then being on the court, I knew I have to stay tough and you always have a chance to come back and be there, you know, uh, this, uh, for example, championships, it's only for the best players, you know, to be the best, you gotta do the best you can and uh, to fight every time. Sometimes it's not happening, sometimes you get crushed down. Uh, many times when I was young, they were saying nothing gonna come out, you know. I didn't have that much will. <laughs> I'm not saying I always was wanting to play tennis. Uh, up to 14 years old, I was like, whatever, you know, my mom wanted me to play, so I said, okay, I'll play some. And when I got to Spain, when I was 14, I was like, uh, my parents put so much into the tennis and I wanted to give it back to them because I appreciate everything what they done. And I thought, okay, I gotta prove that uh, they believe in me and all the people who 
were saying uh, that they were wrong, I just wanted to do it for my parents. And then I just got, uh, I just fell in love with tennis after like 15 years old and I just wanted to practice and play and I loved it. You know, sometimes I had uh, some lows in my career and I was not tough because I don't know, my mind was not there, the right place. But as I get straight, everything and matured, I know I just gonna be out there and fight for every ball. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When you arrived here yesterday, did you were you confident you had this kind of match in you? And how much do you have left? Do you think for the rest of the week? I didn't put one of these questions in my head. I was just okay. I gotta let it go a little bit, relax, not to think so much about the match. Uh, because before the final in Kremlin Cup, they asked, they told me, you know, the draw came out. So if you win, you want to know. I said, look, let me win. Let let me just take much uh, by the time, you know. And when I was flying to 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 Singapore, I, was, I didn't want to know who I'm playing because I was like, okay, just let me get there, you know. And just come slowly. And when I saw the court, it was totally different than Kremlin Cup. And I was like, okay, I just go out there and try my best. I'm already here, so. One more question about your haircut. Um, do you always have scissors in your tennis bag? No, I, I knew it. I asked the umpire to bring large scissors because I knew by small I won't cut my hair. So, And I was like just cutting and I was like, I cannot cut it because it's so thick and wet. So I was like, okay, I, just, I, don't, I don't even know how much I cut there. Agnieszka said uh, that she made a huge mistakes in decisive moments in this match and for you the most important moments and the key to winning this match. Um, I've been doing also lots of mistakes and many things what I normally uh, do didn't work for me today and I didn't feel my best tennis but I hang in there and I mean tennis it's like a chest a little bit so um, it's really hard to say, but uh, even when she had match point, I thought I have to stay in there, you know, and make it un uncomfortable to her. It's really hard to me to analyze the match right now, but um, I was serving important games and I did double faults, which I didn't have to do. And uh, I mean, it was even in the end the match. I was not playing my best. I think she didn't play her best either, but uh, somebody had to win it. Sveta, at this stage in your career, I mean, you know, you're older, you've probably gone through everything that tennis has to throw at a player. But over the course of the last few weeks, have you learned something about kind of what you're capable of to be able to go into Kremlin Cup knowing that you have to win it, winning it, hopping on a plane, and then pulling this off? You know, is this surprising to you or are you learning something? I wish I could do it earlier in my <laughs> earlier ages of my career uh, to believe more in myself. That probably what I've learned more, you know, but I've just taken it step by step, everything. That's how it worked for me. Sveta, just back to your background a little bit. Well, why are you the only person in the family not into cycling? Was it your choice? You didn't like it? or? It's like the most probably asked question I got, but every time I try to find the question, the answers to this question, but... I answer it one way, but I think my dad has different opinion about it. I forgot what he thinks, but uh, I believe that he had the women's and men's cycling team, and my mom was part of it. Then uh, when they got married and she quit, uh, he just decided it's simpler to get just guys team because he was against like communication, you know, love love stories between men and women so it was only men no it's for real like when i was younger i remember i was growing up in it was my childhood only men's team so i was hanging out with boys and you know it helped me a lot because i saw athletes because now the kids they grow up they can go out they can do this you know it's hard to explain to your child why he has to practice all the time not having parties, holidays, this. I didn't have this option, you know. I saw everybody working hard. And then uh, my father said, okay, it's many tennis courts around here, so you, you do something else. He didn't want to open the women's team, so the guys get distracted and the girls as well. 
So yeah, probably that that's my opinion about it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but um, can you tell me the, the tattoo about the pain when you got it done and why you got that particular one done? You Which have tattoo? About pain, something on pain. Pain. Yeah, that one. Uh, well, tattoo is it's really personal thing. Uh, this tattoo, I didn't think too much about that, and I did it pretty, really quick. <laughs> I think I I uh, I would erase, erase that tattoo. I think it's really meaningful and uh, it's good meaning, you know, the, that pain doesn't kill me, I kill a pain because I think we can be much stronger than our, our weaknesses is, you know, and when you have pain, you can, you can overcome any pain you have. You know, I, I think uh, in the life, you can be much stronger than you think. The same as here, you know, I came here, I was tired and jet lag, but I didn't want to think about it, so I can be stronger. Yeah, you had a question. Uh, when you saved match point, did you uh, think, oh, it's a deja vu from Wuhan? No, actually, I didn't remember Wuhan match point uh, before my coach just said me after the match that. I didn't remember I had much point in Wuhan. I was just thinking, I'm still there. I can make it, you know. I don't want to go out. Even I'm tired, I still want to hang in there. Um, Sveta, you're one of the more experienced players on the tour. And this year at the WTA Finals, there are four players who are age 25 and below. So do you think that says something about the changing landscape of women's tennis? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Uh, I know that Serena and other girls who are matured we play good, you know. It's much uh, harder for younger players to get in now and uh, uh, to... And, you know, to to hang in there, you know, experience is playing part of the role in there now. It's very important to know the right moments and the right strategy. Well, you, you said you came here from Moscow and the, the core play is very different. Um, is it part of the experience you're talking about that you could adjust so so quick? Because uh, she obviously had been practicing a lot more than you on this court. Yeah, I was thinking about it, you know. I was like in Tianjin and Naga was in Tianjin. So we both played, like I lost in the semis, I still up to Sunday. And Aga, I believe she played too much is Wednesday and Thursday. And then she pulled out and she said, oh, I'll go. I had a chat with her and she said, I'll go directly to to Singapore and uh, and just get used to the and uh, to the balls, to the court and just rest a couple of days. And and during this time, I had to, I, I went to Moscow, I played the whole event and come here. I was like, OK, that's totally different. But I thought the court of here plays much better for Aga because the ball doesn't bounce that well. But still, you know, I thought I'm confident. You know, I had to think about some advantages to my side and just play there. Of course, I'm experienced because I didn't have to be frustrated that it's so many disadvantages just to play there. That's it. I've got a fan question um, from someone by the name of Ken Sincia. If you were stuck on a deserted island, what is the one item that you would need? Do I get any food there? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe scissors? <laughs> not scissors. The hair wouldn't bother me there, you know. Uh, yeah, the phone. It's a pretty boring answer, but yeah, the phone probably. Ah, no, sorry, Dolce, my dog. That's it, Dolce. I don't care about the phone there, you know. I'm stuck there. I'm, I'm fine to spend the rest of my days with my dog, so it's fine.